Some Zamfara State residents have expressed their displeasure concerning an executive bill sent to the State House of Assembly which proposed 20-year jail term for bandits. Some have asked for a death penalty instead. One of such people by the name of Bello Geladi said the fight against banditry and other related crimes would never come to a halt unless capital punishment was upheld. Joining me still in the studio to discuss this is Francis Chilaka. Thank you, Francis, for staying with us. Now, let's, let's talk this way. How do you think the fight against banditry and other related crimes can be halted? Uh, well, um, people would say that death penalty is something of the past. but um, Is it? But sometimes you, you need to apply a um, harsh situation to a harsh situation. Mm. I believe in that formula. Okay. I believe that, yes, um, 20 years jail time, you know, you're going to be congesting our prisons. These are guys who have no pity um, because... Um, we, we've seen the way they operate. So they don't, they don't even have respect for your laws, mm. for the laws of the land. Not, yeah. So for anybody that doesn't have respect for the laws of the land, um, for me, you know, take the person out. Now, many people will argue the fact that um, banditry, killings, kidnapping, they're, they're symptomatic of, of a larger problem, like unemployment in the land, poverty. W would you want to agree to that, that if the, if the government could provide solutions to all of this, that most of these ills in society will be reduced drastically. If government can curb the issue of corruption and looting in the land, employment will come out. But then you cannot guarantee that it will stop banditry and insurgents. Because many people have claimed it's because of unemployment. The, so the rate of unemployment, so many use take to these social vices and ills to, to, uh, to fend for themselves at, at any means necessary. Okay, and one of such means is to kill some other person because you, you feel you're not employed. Well, the aim is not to go out and kill, maybe to kidnap and then for some ransom and if things go out of hand and then at the end of the day, it ends up a, a killing. The, the, moment you, you, the moment you wake up from sleep and you decide to kidnap somebody, you've made up your mind. If you don't get what you want, you kill that person. You kill that person. Because there are not two ways about it. You, you, you kidnap somebody and he sees your face. You know that once he's set free, he's going to report to the police. Mm. And if he knows you on the street, like somebody who knows you on the street, how will he let you go? Sometimes, you know, let us, let us bring it down to the minor one. Not even that. When you, when you, most people who rape and kill their victims, why do they kill their victims? Not to be identified. So what are we talking about? So do you subscribe to the 20-year deal term no. or to the capital punishment? Capital punishment. And it must be done. You see, when we say capital punishment, it's not you arrest the person, you keep the person for six months and uh, one year. No, instantly. You need to pass a message so that others will, you know, it will deter others from doing the same thing. Will this solve anything at all? It will solve a lot of problems. It will. Now, other people say can, if the government can, can explore other machineries and put security machineries in place, then it can be copped. And then when we're talking about jail term of 20 years and um, capital punishment of execution. Whether government puts um, things in place or not, somebody who wants to do evil will always do evil. For me, I believe that for you to wake up, kidnap somebody or attack somebody, Already, it's not something that happens on the spur of the moment. You, pray, you, you, you have prepared yourself for it. We must, we must admit that. Most people who go to, um, to rob people yes. in their houses, they just don't go because they want to. They prepare themselves. They are ready. They say, okay, if we go, this one may have a gun in his house. So we must go prepared. So they're already prepared. It's either a do or die. I mean, we've, we, we, we're, we're, we're in this country where you've seen um, armed robbers go to rob banks broad daylight. Will you say that is as a result of unemployment? It's as a result of greed. It's because those we elect into power have refused to do the right thing. Failure of leadership? Complete, total failure. Put it this way. You have a friend who is your classmate and you live on the same street. Both of you are struggling to survive. Tomorrow he goes into politics, he becomes a councillor. In less than six months, he's buying four cars. He's building a different houses. What happens? 
you ask yourself, what it means is that our political system is such that enriches people without them doing anything. And we need to change that. That is where our problem lies. Because the young people are watching our politicians stealing their common wealth dry. And it is paining them. Even as I sit here, I am so upset. Because you find out that in Nigeria, somebody would embezzle money. He would loot money. And then when he or she gets caught and then goes to court, he begins to feign illness. He used to come to the hospital on, on wheelchair, on sick bed. It is totally, totally wrong. Because when he, was, he or she was looting the money, the person was not sick. It's, happening out, it's playing out in South Africa too. So it appears that the African man, by nature, is wicked, selfish, self-centered. So when people keep saying employment, 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 I was just watching, was it yesterday, I saw a local government, a transitional committee chair, um, person of a local government, giving women wear, um, headpan and all sorts is empowerment. What sort of empowerment is that? Now, educational system has collapsed. Yes. There are no public schools in Nigeria. Why? We should be asking ourselves these questions. The universities are joining. The federal universities are beginning to collect different, different, you know, admission admittance uh, fees and all of that. So they're making things difficult. Yet, there are some other universities up north that are not collecting the same amount. So what is wrong? It's a failure in the system. Like I keep saying, we need a system that works on its own, independent of who comes in as president or governor or honorable. Now, the system is working. Yeah, but people are going to argue that, that the system works, I mean, because people are in it. People make the system work. And so if the system is put in place, people will have to manage that system. And so corruption is inevitable. How do we begin to ensure we have stronger institutions over stronger people? Because that's the, we have more stronger individuals than our institutions. How do we going to correct that? Because I feel if the, the institutions are stronger than the people who are in them, then it, it has every chance to survive. But in Nigeria, unfortunately, we have stronger individuals than the system as it stands. Good. It starts with when people want to vie for a position in okay. government. If somebody wants to be a governor, for instance, and we already know he has a case in court, INEC should be able to stop that person. INEC should be empowered to investigate people. Okay. Why would somebody go and contest an election with forged results and you declare him winner only for the court to say he has a forged result? So these are, these are things that, this is where the institution needs to work. The judiciary needs to understand that they are not under the armpit of the presidency or the executive arm of government. The judiciary needs to stand on its own. The legislatures need to stand on their own. The separation of power. It needs to and, apply. Yes, okay. But unfortunately, I mean, this administration did promise that, the devolution of power, but we seem to see power being concentrated in the center. Whatever is happening in the center yes. is happening in the states. The governors are too powerful. So look at what has happened in Imo State. Yeah. Is it not a shame? It's a shame to those of us from Imo State. It's also a shame to Nigeria as a whole. And it's even more shameful that the same honorable members, now I call them dishonorable members, some of them decamped to PDP because Emeka Hendoha was governor. All of a sudden, everybody has gone to APC. We need to see, see, this is where the institution works. When you come from one party that brought you to power into another party, you lose that seat. Yeah. We need to get to that point. And that is where I keep saying, Mr. President, because of the power that is concentrated on the, in the presidency, a lot of things falls back to his table. What has happened to our elect, new electoral law that is amended? Why has it not been signed into law? Why is it that the National Assembly is the other day we saw a honorable member exhibiting his four wives to the glaring of every Nigerian. Is that not an insult to the people who elected him? Should that kind of thing happen in our, in our, in our chambers? It shouldn't. Because when you talk of people picking up arms, things like that will cause it. So we need to, as a country, we need to... And then the Nigerian people, I keep saying, you know, we talk of leadership, leadership, leadership. But the Nigerian people too, it seems they have been 
brought down to a point where anything goes. Mm. The people must begin to understand that sovereignty belongs to them. Let's take a look at Nigeria critically as we begin to wrap up, um, wrap up this segment. Um, many people argue the fact that as it stands right now, that Nigeria is in a state of anarchy given the security situation and that as it stands, all the indices of a failed state are, are present with us. You, you want to react to that? Well, it, I mean, it, it's, it's not, everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. If Nigeria was working as a country as it is as it's meant to work, nobody would be talking about setting up regional security outfits. Nobody. It is because people are no longer safe, so to say, in the arms of the army, the police. By now, we should be talking about state police. Well, the, the issue of community policing is, is still on board, so not even state policing how now. How yeah. long will it take? How long will it take to put these things in place? The other day I said something on a different... Um, Station, I said, we have the EFCC. All they've been busy doing is looking for Yahoo boys all over the country. But yet, we have people in government who are doing worse than this Yahoo boys. And like you said, a country where individuals become more powerful than the institution, yes. that country is bound to collapse. Now, 2023, 2023, just around the corner, how do we begin to put things in place to ensure we have qualitative representation, which is what we need critically at this point in time. How do we ensure for rep, um, a qualitative representation? It falls, it, falls, it falls to INEC. Okay. It falls on the electoral reform, National Orientation it. Agency. It falls on NGOs and CSOs. This is the time that INEC should actually start talking about voters' card, voters' education civic education. This is where the National Orientation Agency should come out and begin to teach people and begin to educate people on their rights. What they're supposed to do for the country yes. and what the country is supposed to do for them. How, who you should vote, why you should vote somebody. We need serious um, uh, education, electoral education in this country. Orientation, yes. We need it. it won't, I, I don't find it interesting that INEC is sitting down there they're just waiting. This is 2020, yeah. 2021. 20, by the time we enter 2022, middle of 10, they start talking of voters. Yet yeah, you forget that Nigerians on a daily basis are turning into 18. So why not start now yeah. to issue out voters card? Why not start now to look at those who have lost their voters cards and replace it for them? So why not start now to begin to also educate the people? So we need to, you see, you cannot have qualitative representation so long as money is the bane of our politics. Francis Chilaka, political analyst, thank you very much for your in-depth contribution on PLOS Politics this evening. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take our PLOS report now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. Don't go nowhere. The National Orientation Agency, NOA, has called on Nigerians to remain united in the face of rising insecurity within the country. The Director General of the NOA, Dauda Abari, while speaking to newsmen in Abuja, said the aim of the terrorists is to divide Nigerians along ethnic and religious lines. Mr. Abari urged the public to form a common front to tackle terrorism, saying he is confident that through unity and government relentless efforts, the mirage of insecurity challenges will be overcome. Our government has stepped up surveillance in various ports of entry, especially the airports, to ensure that those coming from countries with high incidences of the disease are properly screened and checked before they are admitted into the country. Other area that has been of concern to the National Orientation Agency has been the security situation in the country. We are concerned by the rising cases of killings around the country and so is government. It is actually worse that at this, at this period, the killing is targeted at both the young and the old. Government has deployed the Air Force, as you, are remember, uh, as you can recall, in addition to combat troops in the area. Let me also emphasize that the whole effort by the enemies of our people to pit us against ourselves, based on religious or ethnic lines, 
we should respond as a united people because the situation we are in is akin to a war situation. Kidnappings, killings and banditry being perpetrated by these insurgents on nation's security situation is in a quagmire and the need to reconstruct its present architecture is a must if this war is to be won. The security of every Nigerian cannot be politicized regardless of whatever creed or faith they profess. More so, if the ongoing war against insurgency has got to be defeated, we can afford to do so on the lines of religious divide and discrimination. Either the 20-year jail term or the death penalty, these are besides the point. Our country is experiencing anarchy, and the sooner effective security measures are put in place, the better our chances in putting an end to all of these menace and permanently shut down and out these dogs of vandalism wrecking havoc on our innocent lives and properties. It is the responsibility of the government to protect its citizens, and where the citizens no longer repose confidence in its government to do so, then it is a failure of leadership and ultimately a failed state. And that's our program for today. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time. Have a good evening and be well.